Welcome back to a new episode where we will be downloading Adam as a default package and we will add my favorite packages and plugins step by step. You may not be seeing me using all the packages, but it is pretty handy to have them and to use them every once in a while. As you can see on my screen, I'm on the official website of Adam right now and it's called adam.io. I'm also running a MacBook as an operating system, but it really doesn't matter which operating system you're using, the output will be the same. So let's click on download and let's install Adam. I will pause the video and I will be right back with you when Adam is installed. Now you can see that we have a brand new installation of Adam. There's nothing but the core package installed. So let's go to our desktop. And let's create a new folder and let's rename it and let's call it HTML tutorial. But you can name it whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. What we need to do now is to open our Adam and we need to open a project. And let's open the HTML tutorials. And on the left hand side you can see the folder and everything inside of it. Well, right now it's empty. So let's click on the folder and create a new file inside of it. So right click, new file, and let's create an index.html. Let's close off the welcome screen. Index is the most common name used for a default page shown on a website. So if no other page is specified when a visitor requests the site, index.html will show up. And if you want to work with HTML files, the extension needs to be .html. And if you want to use CSS, well, let's create a new file. Let's call it style.css because the extension needs to be .css. And if you want to use PHP, the extension needs to be .php and so on. What I want to do now is to add some plugins and it's pretty easy to add them. If you're on a Mac, the only thing you need to do is to go to packages, click on setting view, and click on open. And if you're on a different operating system, you need to click on file, settings, and then you need to click on install. So let's do that. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So this is the place where you can actually install packages. You can also see a couple featured packages, but that's not what we want. So let's scroll up and let's go to the official website of Adam and let's click on packages in the menu. And you can see that Adam has more than, well, 8,600 packages. Now if we scroll down, you can see, well, the recently updated, the newest, the trending, and the featured packages. And if we click on, well, let's say Teletype, and right here, you can see a mini documentation page and they can give you configuration information and so on. But let's go back to our code editor because this is the place where we actually want to install packages. And the first package that I want to install is called Emmet. So let's type down E-M-M-E-T. And Emmet allows you to type shortcuts that are then expanded into full pieces of code. So you're basically going to type less because Emmet has auto completion in it. And this is pretty useful to prevent typos and missing tags. So let's click on install. And once the installation is done, you can see that you're getting three different buttons. You will always see an uninstall button and a disable button, but sometimes you will see a setting button. So let's click on settings. And if we scroll down, you can see all the different key bindings. I won't be going over them. So if you want to and start it whenever you're ready. Now that we have installed Emmet, we can click our settings away. We don't need our style sheet right now, but we want our index.html. Please don't worry about the stuff that I'm going to write down right now, because we will be talking about it later on. Instead of typing less than HTML, greater than, we can, well, let's remove it, write down HTML, hit tab, and you can see that the opening and closing HTML tag is automatically created for us. And this can be done with everything actually. So let's remove it and we can write down diff, hit tab, 
and div opening and closing tags are created. We could also give our div a class name, and that's by writing down div, punctuation mark, and let's say first div. Let's hit tab, and you can see that we created a div with a class first div and a closing div tag. You actually don't need to write down div dot class name. You can actually say punctuation mark first class, hit tab, and you can see that the output is exactly the same. And this can also be done if you want to create a menu. So let's say we want an unordered list, hit tab, hit space, and our unordered list has a list item. Let's hit tab again, enter, and every list item has a link inside of it. So let's write down A, which is an enter, hit tab, and you can see that every link has an href inside of it. So let's remove our code and let's install a new package. So let's go to setting fuse, open it, go to install, and the next package that I want to install is called file icons. And this is a very simple yet wonderful plugin because it simply looks at the extension, so the .html and .css, and it will give it a little icon so we can better identify what kind of file we're working with. We actually need to scroll down because it's while well, created by file icons and it has 7.8 million installs. So let's install it. As you can see, mine is installed right now because I'm getting three new buttons. But if you look at the left hand side of my screen, you can see that index.html has a new icon and style.css as well. You can also change the icons by clicking on settings. And if we scroll down, well, under the settings tab, you can uncheck a couple boxes. So we can say that we want it not to be colored, but I prefer it to be colored. We can say that we want only colors when changed. So whenever we're working on a document, and we can say show icons in file tab and pay a close look to the index.html that's open because, well, the icon just disappeared. But I like to have it, so I will click on the checkbox. So let's continue on with our third plugin. And the name of the third plugin is To Do. So let's search for it. And this does what the name is. You can add to do's in your code. And if you have to do's, it lets us open a sidebar that shows us what we actually need to do in our files. And for us right now, it really doesn't matter because we won't be working on many documents at the same time. But later on, when we will work on complex applications, it is pretty useful to have it. It's the first one, so let's click on install. Let's close our settings tab. And in our index.html, let's write down doc, hit tab, and you can see that some code just appeared. Just don't pay attention to it right now because we won't need it. In between our body tags, let's write down less than, explanation mark, dash dash, space, two more dashes and a greater than. And you can see that the color just turned light gray because what we're doing right now is, well, we basically want to add a comment in our code. And the way you do that is to write down to do in capitals, colon, well, the task that we want to do. So let's say create a website. So let's save it. Let's go back to packages. Let's go to to do and let's click on toggle. And on the right hand side, you can see that something appeared in our screen because this is our to-do list. Right now, we only have one page, so it really doesn't matter. But if you're working on a complex application, like I said, it's very useful to use to-do. So let's save it and let's continue on with our new package. Click on package, setting fuse and open. And right now, I want to install another package called Minimap. And Minimap gives us a, well, Minimap on the right hand side of our screen. And this is a pretty awesome feature when you work with long pieces of code inside one document. So let's write down Minimap with no space in between. And it's the first one because, well, it's created by Adam and it has almost 6 million downloads. So let's click on install. 
Mine is installed right now, so let's close off settings. Let's open our index.html. And on the right hand side of my screen, you can see that a mini map of my screen just appeared. And if I copy paste my HTML opening and closing tags a couple of times, and you look at the right hand side of my screen, you can see that the mini map is, well, pretty useful right now because if I want to go to the second block of my code, I can just click on it. And if I want to go back to the bottom of my screen, it will take us there as well. So let me remove everything because we don't need it. And right now I want to install a new one. So let's click on package again, setting view open. And the package that I want to install is called pigments. So let me write that down. And pigments is a pretty cool plugin whenever you use colors inside CSS because it will add the color behind it. And this can be a color name, hexadecimal value or RGB value. You can see that there are actually two pigments, so one for the minimap and one for your regular code. I will only be focusing on the regular code. So let's click on install. And let's open our style.css whenever it's installed. Let's write down HTML, opening and closing curly brackets. So what we want to do now is to give our HTML a background color. So let's write down background dash color semicolon, space, and let's say black. It took a couple of seconds, but you can see that the background color of black turned to black and the color, well, the text turned white. And this can be done with red as well. So wait a second. And you can see that the background color is red. You might think that this isn't very useful because everyone knows what red is, but let's say that we want to add a RGB value. So let's say hashtag 0080000. And if we wait for a second, you can see that the color is green. And this is what pigments is useful for. It's well, mostly for styling. The next plugin that I want to install is called Adam Beautify. So let's click on packages, setting view and click on open. And let's say that we want to install Adam Beautify. And it's the first one because well, it almost has 7 million downloads. So let's click on install. And what Adam Beautify does, it will help you for every programming language because it will clean up your code and make it more readable. And you can see every programming language that you can use Adam Beautify with. It supports HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, and so on. Well, almost every programming language. So let's close off our settings because we don't need it anymore. Our style sheet as well. And let's go to our index.html and let's hit doc, tab. So right now I need to remove because it's pretty beautified right now. So let me remove everything. I make it, well, one long sentence. Let's click on packages, add and beautify, and let's say beautify. And you can see that the code just got changed to what it was. And this was it for this episode. In the next episode, I want to start creating an HTML5 document where we'll be creating our first basic page. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button.